In the name of Jesus, amen. Our text for tonight is Psalm 38, uh, which we sang earlier. This psalm was written by King David. And out of the seven penitential psalms, this is the third one. 6, 32, 38, and so forth. There are two sides to God. On the one hand, he is holy and just, and he demands perfection. On the other hand, God is merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. David, David acknowledged that he sinned. So on the one hand, David acknowledges that he deserves God's rebuke and God's discipline. Yet on the other hand, David prays for God's mercy. David says in verse 1, O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. And so also with us, during confession, we pray that we justly deserve God's temporal and eternal punishment. Yet on the other hand, we pray that God would be merciful to us on account of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of Jesus, his beloved son. If God was to dis discipline us, we don't want him to discipline us in his wrath like David prayed. But we would want him to discipline us out of love. It's good that God discipline us for the right reasons, namely, so that we turn from temptation and sin and for God to keep us safe and faithful to him. His discipline of love toward us is good. He does it because he loves us and cares for us. Now let's look at verses 3 to 8. In this section, David describes the result of sin. He describes what sin has done to him. Verse 3 says that his body is sick and that there is no health in his bones. Verse 5 says that his wounds stink and fester. Verse 6 says that he bows his head to the ground. He mourns all day long. Verse 7 says that his side burns with pain. Verse 8 says that he is feeble and crushed. Finally, verses 9 and 10 say that he cries all day long. His heart throbs and his strength fails and his eyes are heavy. Wow. He has gone through a lot. He has suffered much. All of us can identify with David. Our sin corrupts our thoughts, our mind, and our words. Our sin corrupts our whole body. Our sin causes emotional and physical problems. And because of our sin, we mourn and we groan. What are the consequences of our own sin? Sickness, guilt, sleepless nights, emotional and physical pain, aging, and death. Our sin caused Jesus to cry out in the garden of Gethsemane. In other words, Father, is there any other way to save mankind? And it is as if the Father said, No, my son, you are the only way. And so Jesus then was resolved to head toward the cross. There in the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus' sweat was like drops of blood. Our sin caused Jesus to be scourged with, with the whips from Pilate's soldiers. Our sin caused Jesus to be crucified. 
Yet from the cross, Jesus cries out, Father, forgive them. And in the midst of our repentance, we find comfort in these words. We find comfort in the forgiveness of sins. In the next section, David describes his friends and his family members and his enemies. They are not kind to him, but they hurt him. When David needs help, his friends and companions and his nearest kin, quote, stand far off. They refuse to help him. Furthermore, false witnesses, quote, lay their snares for David. They, quote, speak ruin of him. His foes are mighty and many people hate him, according to verse 19. And pe people that David did not wrong, they attack him. And verse 20 says that many people render evil upon David because he follows after good. Has this, has this very thing happened to you? You need help. You, you need someone to help you, but no one cares. Or someone said, yes, I'll help you, but they changed their mind. You felt alone. Or sometimes some of the, your closest friends have turned on you and hurt you. People make fun of you because you believe in Christ. You endure hostility from an unbelieving world. Yet, you are not ashamed of the gospel. You hold on to Christ alone as your Savior. This happened to Jesus. Jesus came to his own, but his own did not receive him. Jesus' own people handed him over to Pilate. Judas betrayed Jesus. Peter denied Jesus. Jesus' own people cried out, crucify him, crucify him. He was nailed to a cross, and while on the cross, Jesus does not rebuke his enemies. Rather, he prays, Father, forgive them. Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. He was made to be sin even though he knew no sin. He bore the wrath of God on the cross. Cry out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He is abandoned by his friends and betrayed by his disciples. His enemies rise up against him. And there on the cross, Jesus took your sin upon himself. He dies for you and he rises from the dead for you, his friend, his dear lamb, his child. Moving on. Who does David wait for? He says, quote, but for you, O Lord, do I wait. Who does David believe will answer his prayer? He says, quote, it is you, O Lord my God, who will answer. Now this shows David's faith in the Lord. Faith, it shows his patience to wait upon the Lord. It shows his faith in, in, in God who will answer his prayer. We may grow impatient with God, but wait for him. He does hear your prayers. And he will answer them in the best possible way. Finally, David confesses his sin and he believes in God's forgiveness, in God his Savior. David says in verse 18, I confess my iniquity, I am sorry for my sin. The word penitent means showing sorrow or regret for what you've done wrong. A Christian who is penitent is sorry for their sin and they seek the forgiveness of sins. And because of verse 18, this psalm is, psalm is called a penitential psalm. David is sorry for his sin. He confesses his iniquity before God. 
And yet David believes that deliverance comes only through God. He says in verse 22, make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Who is the Lord God? He is David's source of salvation. And so also for us. We, we, we say in Luther's small catechism, confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins. And second, that we receive absolution. That is the forgiveness of sins. You see, you cannot have one without the other. You need both. It is good for us to say, I am sorry, and to seek the forgiveness of sins on account of Christ. It is good for us to confess our sin to God and to believe in the forgiveness of sins and there is forgiveness for you because of the death and resurrection of Christ King David cried out for mercy and we cry out for mercy and there is mercy on account of the sacrifice that Jesus made upon the cross because of God's forgiveness upon us we are able to forgive one another. Because of God's love for us, we are able to love one another. Thanks be to God for his grace and mercy toward us in Christ. Thanks be to God who hears our prayers and answers them. Thanks be to God who is our only source of salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.